Uh, welcome to the Teen Talk live broadcast. I'm your host for today, Minister Jamal Lali, and today we have a young special guest by the name of Samaj Bogan, and uh, we want to talk about him and we're t teens in general, you know, trying to be their best to walk as young believers in Christ, but the pressure of being a teen it's hard, so we want to just welcome Samaj in. If you got something to say, brother, you can say it, man. Let the people know who you are, you know, about yourself, you know. Oh, well, I'm glad that uh, Bishop invited me to do this. So, I, always, like, I want to try this. Okay. All right, all right. So, tonight we want to take a look at three areas of teen struggle. All right, three areas that are critical for young teenagers who are walking or, or attempting to walk with Christ, you know, being young and sometimes being overlooked. So we want to look at three areas of teen struggles. Amen. All right. So why don't teens like church? Uh, well, I wouldn't. Well, most teens don't like church, maybe because they might think it's boring or they tired of hearing the same thing or they don't like to get judged. By certain people, right? You know. That's what most teens don't really like church because they don't want to be judged on what they do. Some of them don't want to help, you know. All right, okay. So let's deal with the first answer you gave me. You said boring, right? And and you said boring because of what? Because we you're not involved, uh, teens. We don't you know do enough with the teens, you know. We don't do it the way y'all want it to be done. You know, born. What do you mean by born? Um, kind of like more like not involved. You know, not like like we don't have our own like we have our ministry, but we don't have our own ministry. Like, it'd be like it'd probably be better if you focus on like us a little more, since we're like really like we're young and you know. Right. So you saying teens? All teens go through the same thing. Well, most of them. Most of us. Right. So is that your personal? Uh, reason why you don't like t church? What's your personal reason for not liking church? Because a lot of teens is going to look at this and, and, and all of them, you know, probably have a different viewpoint, you know, but what's your reason? Because maybe they can tell you, you know, you might say, you know, you don't get involved and, and some teens may say, you know, do you get involved? Some teens might say that, you know, because there is certain things for, you know, how old are you? 14. You 14? Oh, yeah. There's a lot for you to do. But, okay, so what's your personal reason of church being born? Uh, yeah, more like not being involved in certain stuff. You know? mm -hmm. Stuff that's like really like, like there's stuff to do, but like it's not really to my interest. Mm. You know? so. so what's your interest? Basically like a lot of activities, you know, I do a lot of activities and you know, like I don't really like doing the singing or like stuff like that. Singing. Uh, I get what you're saying. So you're saying that if if it's if you're not interested, you know, in in the activities that's already established, you're not you 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 don't want to be involved. No. Okay. All right. What else do you like? What else could be more, you know, n non boring, so to say. Um. Well, like, well, like, my church, like, it's not really that boring, because, like, we don't talk about the same stuff, like, every Sunday, like some of the ch other churches do. Mm -hmm. Like, they talk about the same stuff, so it kind of makes it boring. Right. So. Okay. All right. See, like I say, a lot of teens, they, 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 they are going to see you, man, and, and they're going to, you know, they're going to judge what you're saying, not you, but they're going to judge what you're saying, so. You know, besides um, it being boring, what else did you say? You said what? That it was uh, no, no no one's focused on you. What what can we focus on as far as teens? What do you think that more people or in the church could focus on as far as teens? Because like I said, you're old enough to know that you know everything is not going to go your way. You know that, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so. What if you can be involved? What would you be involved in? 
Because, like I said, we don't, not every church can, can tend to every, every, you know, area of, of life. But that's the goal. All right. So seeing that that's not, you know, in our, our, our circum, circumspect yet, what can, what can you, what do you, what can you do? What would you do? What, are, what would, what can you be involved in? To say, you know what, he really wants, he really wants, you know, to take things to another level as a teenager. Well, like, I like, like, recording, like, the, uh, like, when they do, when they preach on the pulpit. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, same thing as far as, like, the activities and stuff. Like, so. I'm, I'm okay with those, like, I like doing that. Mm-hmm. So have you put effort in trying to, you know, pursue that? A little bit, so far. Okay. A little bit. Are you still pursuing it? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so I want to ask, what would he feel about camping between a father and son camping trip? That type of stuff? Would you like that? Is that cool? Uh, yeah. Father, son camping trip? Mm-hmm. So, no. Yeah? Yeah, I like that. You like stuff like that? All right. So now we know what, what we have to do. You know, I mean, and I, I, I hear what you're saying because sometimes church can get boring. You know, but if you have nothing to do, you know, then that's what it is. It'll be boring. But like I said, there are things to do. You said you like filming and recording. You have to pursue those things and, and don't, you know, let the ball drop when you get just a little job done. You know, you have to keep doing it. So it, once you stop, it's going to get boring. You know, what about, you know, teaching? Is the teaching boring to you? Are you learning something? Yeah. Okay. I learned a little bit. All right, like what? For example, give us what you learned today. Um, today, uh, I really like what I learned. I wasn't like, like I wasn't really paying attention like that today. But I was hearing, but I wasn't really paying attention. But on Sunday, Sunday, like for our Sunday school, when we was talking about. Um, how if if we're in a Bible reading the Bible and, and we get a good connection with God and something comes up on us, we don't we don't have to worry about trying to fight that problem. We can uh, we can just ask God to fight it for us and He'll fight for us. So All right. Yeah, all right, I wanna uh, before we go to the next area, you said you weren't paying attention. All right. So I wanna ask you and all the teens, is it the people you the reason why you don't pay attention or is there too many distractions or is there what is it why is it hard for teens to pay attention in church i think it's more of the distraction like what like what's the distraction to you at the church you go to uh like playing games on the phone or just wow. like other seeing other people like do other stuff so we try to find something else than listen to Right, to occupy your mind, right? Why is that? Is it because, you know, you really don't want to be there, you feel forced, or, you know, if have some have somebody, you know, flawed your view of church or someone caused you not to like church or, you know, not want to go to church, and, you know? We could be real. We could be real. Well, no, I just, like, like sometimes, like, I don't, like, I don't want to go. But at the same time, I know I have to go, so... Why don't you want to go? Like I, I've, I've, um, I've, I've met uh, young people. Well, as far as teenagers, I'm young too. Teenagers who had some of these same viewpoints you had, and and the reason why they had that because they really don't understand the purpose of church, the purpose of people gathering every Sunday, Tuesday or Friday, because they don't really understand the purpose. When you don't understand the purpose of something, you won't value it as much as you would if you understood the purpose of it. Like basketball. Do you know the purpose of basketball? Nope. No, but you love it, though. So what if we had, say, a sports team, a basketball team at, at churches? That would will, that will be interesting, right? Yeah. Have you thought about, you know, have you talked to people? You know, have you came to your leaders in your church and asked, you know, oh, can we do this? Or, you know, I have an idea. Have you done that yet? No. Nope. No. Nope. I, I, I got a parent that asked the question. 
Should churches be responsible for taking away their kids' phones in church? Is that a... Or I'm going to let you answer that first. Um, no, I don't think it's responsible. I mean, well, it can be at the same time if the, if you know that the kid would get distracted by their phone, then mm-hmm. be, you would be held, held responsible for right. not taking it away. But if you know it's not a problem, then you wouldn't be held responsible for it. Right. For me, since I have a son and he's going to grow up and he's going to be in church, there will be no phones. There will be no phones, no iPads, no tablets. You know, I don't want to offend anybody. I don't want to step on nobody's toes. But me personally, now that I'm I'm a parent now, so I can say certain things and yes, stay humble, there will be no tablets. Because when you when when a child comes to church, that's all they'll look forward to. They won't look forward to, you know, do anything else. But you know what, I'm just here. And if I had kids under my up upbringing, I will always tell them, you just don't want to go to a place and just be there. There's something for you to do, whether you're 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There's something for you to do. And and Lord willing, once I get my church, there ain't no phones, no, none of that. None of that. Because we're going to show people that the word of God is relative to no matter what age you are. It's It revolves around. And like you said, that's a distraction. Have you ever been on your phone in church? Yes. Was it because of, you know, you just didn't want to listen or... It just it's just born. It's just born. It's just born. All right. So this is the next area we're going into. You said it's born. There's too many distractions. What can adults do to make the church a place of fellowship a better place for teens? Um, and and I know you have a lot. It gotta be a lot. We could be real. Don't hold back nothing. You could tell the truth. As far as, like, our kids' ministry, like, I think we should have, like, our own kids' ministry. Like, for it to, like, mostly, like, you know how some churches, like, most of the, most of the, like, throughout the church, they have, like, their own ministry. Like, Mm -hmm. you don't go to the big church. Mm -hmm. Like, when we were in our uh, little uh, classroom Mm -hmm. for Pastor Barnes, like, it seems more fun. And, like, I actually, like, I like it better to be in there. Actually, like, because I understand, like, a little more. And I, like, I actually pay attention more. Right. So you're saying you will have you will rather have a children church separate from the adult church? Yes. I like that idea. Have you thought of have you talked to anybody about having that? I I told him about it. Who your um your youth leader? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. All right. So what else? What else uh can adults do to make a church a better place? Um, well, that's that's kind of like really it for for me because. I mean, you can only make it as best as you can. If like, right. Because if they're not going to get it or try to hold it, then that's on them. Oh, I like that. Okay. All right. So what would you do now? If if you had a chance to be like, you know, hey, hey uh, such and such, you know, I I have this idea, you know, I want to do this. What If you know the um, the potential you have, you know, you're a young man growing up. What what are you doing now to better enhance the youth around you? Well, I'll tell them, like, I'd probably invite more of my friends to the church, you know, to say, oh, we have, like, a kids ministry, it's fun, and, like, it ain't, it ain't, you ain't got to worry about being bored or nothing, like, we all fun. They try to just bring more people into it for church, you know. Mm, so it's not the, it's not the kids ministry that's born to you, it's the adult ministry. Right. All right, so... This is going to tie into our third area, you know, and we want to take our time with this. We really want to deal with this, and we really want to help kids out there because a lot of teens go through the same thing. Why do kids, teenagers, why do they resent their parents? Before he answers that, a parent asks the question, what is children's church? What does it look like? Wow. What would it be? What would children's church be like? Wow. Well, children's church, it can be a group of, like, a group of us, like, kids, like, sitting by each other in the table and a youth leader talking to us about different things about God. Mm -hmm. And what can help us, like, for our our flosses, what can help us. 
Like, say we have an issue with our anger, and then he'll talk, he'll give us a scripture, like, to help us read up on, to help us with that, or, like, anything that's, like, not of God, basically. Right. So, yeah, just a group of us at the table, and a youth leader, talking about what he can, what can he help us better with, to better ourselves. Mm. That's it? Wow. I, I, to be honest, I think it is. It'll probably look like an adult church too, cause I mean, what is church about? Why why do we go to church? Like I asked you before, why do you go to church? Cause you said that you don't have to go, so why do you? So you can fellowship with other people that believe in God. Right. So then, when you're fellowshipping, fellowship shipping with other believers, that means you're learning something, right? Like you said. So basically, the the kid the 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 kid church or the teen church, youth, young adult church will look like what? The adult church. Why? Because you're still going to have to sit and learn and be involved during the process of the word being taught to you. You know? Ella Finley, Ella Finley said it is so true. She said even though it's a separate church, they still have to be governed by rules. Yes. And it's just not play hour. Right. I mean, and, and, and that's the thing. Kids think... Separate from the adult church, like we, ha they have more freedom. Like, no, if kids come together, you still have to pay attention and listen and learn the word. It's not where you could go and I'm, oh, I could be on my iPhones and I could do this and I could talk to somebody. I can play, you know, I can just, you know, because truth be told, a lot of youth, youth ministries don't grow for the simple fact that it's like people have their kids in these certain ministries as a, a, a substitute, a substitution for like a babysitter or something. And that's just, just my opinion. You know, some, some parents, you know, I've did my research. Some parents rather have their kids, you know, just, you know, in a place where, you know, I look, I don't got to worry about them right here, you know, so I'm going to just put them in, I'm going to make them somebody else's responsibility for a moment, you know, and yet they, they, they're not learning nothing. Or they're they're remembering things that they have no value of, and I believe that if the the child sees that the parent has value in God, then that their lifestyle will affect the children. You know, sometimes we you know we we like to how how could I say it? You know, I don't want to say overthink, but we undervalue certain things that the church offers, like you know, because. I hear stories all the time. Back then, you had to sit in church. If you was a kid, you had to sit in church. Since you said that, one of the parents said, before your next topic, um, what does he see the word? How does he ask him how he values the word? Right, yeah. That, and that's where I was going. <coughs> how, how do you value the word? I mean, because uh, your dad is a great man of God. Your mother is a great woman of God. And you see that they love the word. So how does that affect you? How does that rub off on you? Well, sometimes it rubs off me because, like, most of the time when they tell me about, like, the word, it's like when I did something wrong. So, like, it, it, it values me, but it doesn't at the same time. Right. So outside of church, <coughs> what does, what does, how does it feel to know that, you know what, I know God, you know, my I, my parents know God. You know, and how how does that you know feel? It feels like it feel it feel good, but it kind of feels like 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 it's something like somebody was to like try to like test you or try to talk to you about something you would know it. Like some like a Jehovah Witness try to come up to you and tell you something different. <laughs> you, know, you you you're taught like different, and you can like talk to them about what you what you believe in. You know. Yeah. Okay, so I, I like that. But we don't want to, We all right, let's um, not go too far from our, our last area. Um, and the question is, like we said, why do kids or teenagers resent their parents? Do you know what the word resent means? No. No. It means basically hatred. I'm holding something against my parents, and it's causing me to dislike them or hate them. Um, Why do you think teenagers and kids resent their parents? Well, because like some parents that's like really into God, like 
they make their <coughs> they make their kids like do stuff that they don't really want to do. So the kids have, they become having hatred. It's like us like we don't want to really do what's God. We want to do more like what's the devil type work. So it's not it's not we're not comfortable with doing that. We're comfortable with doing the opposite of that. So it kind of makes us bring hatred to our own parents. Mm. And when we're not able to like do what we want, it just even builds up. So when we like eighteen and get our like when we get eighteen and stuff like <laughs> it make us want to like leave, you know? Right. So basically, it yeah, we don't want to. We don't want to really do what they say that's going to help us in life. We want to do it our own. Wow. And I, I'm glad you t- you told the truth, you know, because like I said, oftentimes, you know, when you don't know the purpose of something, there's always going to be a rejection or, you know, a misunderstanding, you know. And, you know, do, do you have any other reasons on why? Um, because, look, when, if a, if... If parents, you know, know know God, I'm talk I'm talking directly to you now. They know God, and you know they're following Christ. Do you believe that they will tell you to do something wrong? No. Nope. So it's just you know, like you said, I want to do my own thing. I want to be me. You know, that's it. That's all. I want to be me. You know. But do you know what the Bible says about? You know. Obeying your parents, honoring your mother and father. Yeah. So why is you know? Do you know personally for yourself? Why is it hard for you to do that? Besides, it got to be something deeper than just you wanting to do your own thing. It got to be. Someone just asked, "Does he want to be saved? Can you deal with that?" Both of his parents are in ministry. Right. Does he want to be in ministry? Does he want to really want to be saved? Um, I do want to be saved, but like, it's like, I don't like, I want to be saved, but like, it's like at this time, like, I still like, I still like, I'm not sure if I want to be saved at this moment, but I know I want to be saved, but I'm not sure if at this exact time I do. Cause I like, I don't want to be saved and then have to go do some, do something stupid and then it makes me look bad. Like, oh, I'm saved and I'm still doing what. Wow. That's real, man. Oh, wow. That's it right there. That's real. Wow. That's real. Wow. Now, parents, you understand a whole lot. That's real. And and you know what? Samaj, a lot of people wouldn't even say that. Some people, uh, you know, will 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 fake it. Some people will fake it. Say, you know what? I'm I'm saved, but you know, but there's no reality to what they're saying or. To their lifestyle, and you know, that's real, man. I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm really speechless because not a lot of people will, will say, you know, it's not my time, or you know. Can, can I interject as a producer? What could we do to help you want Christ? How old are you? Fourteen. At fourteen, is very hard, huh? Is it hard having a, a father who's a pastor? A minister, everything he talks to you about is the word of God. You have a mom, she's dedicated to church. How does that affect you? What does it really feel like? Like, it felt like, 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 kind of like I'm being like, like, I'm like, like I'm being like against, like, it kind of, it kind of felt like, it just feels like, like odd, because like, I'm like on the other side, like, I'm not like, like, I'm not doing like, like what God say and they're like on like they're up to where God's doing like it just feel like backwards, you know. So when you go to school, do you represent church or do you represent Samaj? Samaj. Tell me what that looks like and why. Uh what it looks like getting in trouble and like getting like just doing bad like, could get me like killed or something. Just just be just mainly of the influence I hang around with. So. Now, why do you, do you feel you hang around that influence? Because you don't want the influence of your parents of God? Mm, no, it's more of like, I see what they do and I like, like I like it. So You're more close to his age, um, host. Let me give it back to you. He <laughs> said, this is what he said. He said, I see what they're doing mm-hmm. and I like it. Right. 
And yeah, man, I've been there. I've been there, you know, and, and one thing I always tell kids is, you know, some some simple as, you know, I didn't get the 23 yesterday. I was 14 once. I was 15 once. I was 16 once, you know. And first of all, let me ask this question before I go any further and making statements and giving you uh, something that will really help you and change your life if you let it. Why do you like what you see as far as the negative influence? Um, well, like, like, some of it can bring, bring like, a lot of fame to you, like, a lot of, like, a lot of respect. Like, you don't have to worry about, like, anybody trying to do anything because you have, like, people around you that, like, could protect you, you know? Right. Yeah. Having somebody told you that that's not really true, mm -hmm. but what makes you still want to go after it? And I'm asking, I'm asking you this because fourteen-year-olds I know die for nothing. Thirteen-year-olds I know die for nothing. And on on the on the regular basis, what what are you feeding your mind? Because, like I said, if you know right from wrong, you know what helps you. You know what destroys you. You know what hurts you. You know why? You know it's 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 like. For example, I, I, I hate people really, if people know me, they really know I, I don't really like to, you know, dwell on past stuff. But I grew up in an environment which was not conducive for my state of mind, for my mindset. All right. And as I got older, the Bible says I was born into sin, shaping in iniquity. So my environment, besides my mother, helped raise my mother. So depending on where... Our kids are, man, you know, I can only speak from from what I saw growing up, from what I experienced. The environment that we feed our kids is what they're going to produce. Wherever they are, the schools they go to, the music they listen to, you know, the influence that we have on them, the effort, you know, that we take as parents and try to help, you know, not... You know, just change the mindsets of our kids, man. You know, cause like we 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 see is 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 hard. We got the world feeding us rap, all this nonsense, man, and and it and it's just it's nothing, you know. And it really starts with the parents. I know for a fact that if I'm telling my son, or I'm di I'm you know I I do this, I, I I'm telling them this, I'm telling them that, and you know, he see me opposite. He won't value what I truly believe in. You know, it'll be hard for him to 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 to, to just value 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 God. If I say I love God, but he see me do anything, that will flaw him. Like man, he basically lied to me. I've been there. I've been there. And because, like, I have a little brother who's in the streets. And you know why he resent me? Because I tell him the truth all the time. I don't glorify him, you know, being in the streets or, you know, having guns and, you know, doing all type of stuff, man. Because truth be told, man, you know what they say in the streets? You're going to end up dead or where? In jail. In jail. That's what you want? Okay. So before we leave, what, what, what will really... Make you change your mind about what you're doing. I mean, if if you know that you could end up dead or you could end up in jail for life or bound in a wheelchair for over nothing, over nothing, all the money you gonna get is gonna burn away. You ain't gonna be able to see it. It's not one gang member I know right now who's still who's rich from robbing and stealing, killing, doing nothing. What will really change your mind about that the fast life on how you do your way? I think I just gotta be forced and willing to do it. I just gotta like give up everything just to do it for God, like not for nobody else, but for me and God. That's basically the only thing that can change me. I gotta I gotta be willing in my heart to be willing to do it. So that's my question. What 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 is what is it gonna take for you to really say, you know what, I really don't want it? Because you don't really want to have to, you know, 
get shot, get put in the hospital. Now you got to poop. You got to, you know, you know, poop in the bag now. You got your mama's got to, you know, your dad probably got to take off work because now you're in a wheelchair or something. Because, man, I got family members in jail and I'm a bad pen pal. I don't do no writing, no letters, no putting money on no books. I don't even do funerals. <laughs> and that's the life that these young kids is going for. And if we really don't help them and tell them the truth, I feel like we held accountable. Every Sunday I see you, dog, I refuse to just, you know, let, let a Sunday go by without me. You feel me interacting? You know that. So that's why I'm asking, well, what is what is it going to take? All right, so you don't got to answer it now. We'll be back in two minutes. Please stay tuned, and it's only going to get better. Amen. All right. So look, we want to thank y'all first and foremost for tuning in and just, you know, giving y'all ear and we know that those who listening are really going to take action no matter what your kids do. Love them. Love them. I, I now that I have a son, you know, I always look at my relationship with God. When he whining, I've done it cuz I didn't get my way. Tantrums, I've done it. 23 years old. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to have, I'm going to let, you know, Samaj have closing remarks. All right. Love your kids. All the parents out there, love your kids no matter what they do. How bad they hurt you, how bad you want to slap them upside their head, kick them out. Love them. Love them. Because you're going to need them one day. You got to get old. Uh -uh. You don't want no caregiver coming. You know, y'all know. But love your kids. Love them. <laughs> All right, you got something to say, young brother? Uh, I just want to say thank you, Bishop, for having me on the Real Talk Radio. Always. Um, and also thank Minister Ali too. He's been like an insp inspiration to to me ever since he got to the church. And yeah, I thank him for that too. Well, y'all about to have me in tears, man. <laughs> y'all about to have me in tears, man. Yeah. About to have, and even the father said he about to cry. See, a lot of people don't know. We think we're, people just think we're doing this to be something. No, real talk is about changing people's lives. Yeah, right? man. We've been in church all day Sunday, and we can't wait to get on in prayer that one family, one mother, one father hears what we talk about, and it makes a difference in their children's life. That's but right. Somebody, go ahead and close it out with prayer, man. Don't got to be long. Um, Father God, I thank you for having me today. Looking me up with no flaws and no issues. I'm able to walk on both of my feet. And, wow. And I hope that I've touched somebody out there, whoever was watching the video. You know, that, yeah, I just I just hope I did something to somebody, you know. And I got to start trying to change myself, too. Just name my prayer, man. Amen. Amen. So, 
once again, we want to thank y'all for tuning in to the Teen Talk. With I'm the, the host, Minister Jamal, and our guest.